All right, so today I want to introduce you to the top 10 co-dominant genes in ball pythons. And when it comes to ball python genes, there's over 200 genes. It's pretty amazing. And out of those 200 genes, there's actually three different types. There's recessive, there's dominant, and co-dominant. And the thing that sets co-dominant apart from the others is you can actually make a super form with two copies of the gene. And you can see one copy of the gene, just the individual gene, unlike the recessive, where you can't see one copy you need two copies for a visual. And when it comes to co-dominant genes, I actually went over to Morph Market and I looked up how many co-dominants there were. And believe it or not, there's actually between 85 and 90 co-dominant genes in the ball python industry that are actually listed over on that website. And if you actually ask me what my number one co-dominant gene is as far as my personal preference, of course, that would be the bamboo. The snake I have around my neck here, this is Bobby. He is a, just a straight bamboo bamboo ball python with no other genes in the mix. And it's, it's kind of interesting if you look at the, kind of the popularity of the genes and the sheer numbers of each genes that are listed over on Morph Market. Let me tell you, bamboo is not in the top 10, which is pretty interesting. So not everybody agrees that the bamboo is one of the top 10 most popular uh, co-dominant genes. And it really comes down to two things. If you actually look at kind of how the genes work with other genes, I think that is really a big effect on how popular a gene is as far as being on the top 10 list. So for example, you can actually take a bamboo and mix it in with other genes. You know, as a breeder, I'm always looking, hey, I have a bamboo. What can I mix the bamboo with to make some really impressive combinations? And that is really where the bamboo can be kind of limited. I'd say maybe half the genes that you work in with the bamboo, sometimes you can hardly even tell they're there. And sometimes they completely disappear because the bamboo is so so visually dominant. Of course, you can make some really amazing combinations with the bamboo with certain genes. And kind of the other thing that really comes into play as far as being on the top 10 list, and that is the price. You know, you can have the best gene in the whole world, and if it's out of reach financially, a lot of people actually won't buy into it. And it's kind of, you know, the price kind of works with the supply and the demand. So if you did have something that worked really well with a lot of combinations, a lot of people bought into it, of course, that would increase the supply and it would drive the price down. So when I actually first started in ball pythons about five years ago, the super bamboos were selling for about $4,000. Pretty crazy. As a matter of fact, just for Bobby here, I think I paid, I think it was like $1,200 or something that I paid for Bobby. So at that time, bamboos were really expensive and it's only been just recently that the price has come down. So it's a combination of price and how well they work with some of these other genes. So I'm going to jump over to the internet and I want to show you the top 10 co-dominant ball python genes. All right, so I'm going to jump over here at MorphMarket.com and I want to go through the top 10 co-dominant genes in ball pythons, starting with the number one most popular, and then I'll tell you why I think they make the list as far as the top 10, and then I want to show you my favorite combination using those genes. And the first one I want to start with is the pastel. This is what a pastel looks like, and the pastel, let me tell you, it blows all the other ones out of the water as far as sheer numbers. Believe it or not, there's almost 60,000 pastels and pastel combinations over here on Morph Market. It's pretty amazing. And when it comes to pastel, the, the thing that really sells it is a lot of pastels have bright yellow color. A lot of them can be really bright yellow. Some of them can be kind of a faded out yellow. But a lot of times when you mix pastel in with combination, it really is a brightening gene and really brings a lot of brightness to a lot of your combinations. Of course, a lot of people starting out especially, they want the really bright and flashy ball pythons. And if you actually take a look at this one, this one's pretty amazing. This this one is actually from 2014 so this is you know, to, you know this year is actually 2020 so this is six years old and take a look at the price on this pastel $80 I mean you go to the reptile shows now and pastels are still $80 so even back then six years ago you could pick up some pastels you know this it's pretty much just a little bit above what, what you'd pay for a normal ball python so a lot of times people come up to the table and they're looking at normals and just for a little bit more you can actually step up to a pastel and the pastel I think is you know it's probably the one of the number one genes as far as working it into other combinations pastel can really enhance almost any other combination by working it in there's nothing that really looks bad with pastel I think that's another reason that is up here and the top of the list number one 
So this is one of the, the, this is actually what you could potentially do with the pastel. So you can actually mix it in with a lot of other brightening jeans to really enhance the brightness in a lot of combinations. So this one's actually a combination of the Firefly, which is the fire and the pastel. And it also has orange dream and yellow belly. So all four of those jeans are brightening jeans. And most of this yellow color I'd say probably comes from the pastel. And then you add the other enhancing jeans on top of it and you get this really bright flashy snake it's pretty awesome so here is number two the number two most popular gene as far as co-dominants that make the list and that is the enchi i actually looked up the numbers of enchi and there's a little bit over 18,000 enchis over here on morph market which is kind of crazy and essentially what the enchi does is it really reduces the pattern sometimes almost giving it a like a banded appearance sometimes it can really scramble it up you can also make the super enchi which really reduces the pattern even more and the, the enchi also brings up a lot of your orange colors too so in a lot of your combinations when you add enchi not only does it reduce the color the, the pattern it also brings out a lot of your orange color i actually pulled up a combination here with the enchi and of course you don't bring out any orange in this one this is actually an azanthic enchi it also has fire in there so you can mix enchi into just about anything else and you can definitely see the enchi reducing the pattern in a lot of combinations it'll bring out the orange but with the azanthic a lot of times it'll actually just kind of clean it up a little bit and the fire you actually add fire to a xanthic and it really cleans up the white spots on the snake and let me tell you enchi is one of my favorites you can work on it with just about anything and you get some really amazing combinations with enchi all right, so coming up on number three on the list, and that is the banana. I actually counted the, the number of bananas over here, almost 16,000 bananas over here on Morph Market, which is kind of crazy. So the banana is really similar to the Coral Glow. I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same gene. And kind of the interesting thing is the Coral Glow actually didn't make the list. And I think the difference between the banana and the Coral Glow is everybody wants the name, the banana. <laughs> Everyone would rather buy the banana name versus the name Coral Glow, which is, which is kind of interesting. It's, I don't know why the name is just so appealing. And when it comes to bananas, they can be really visually dominant as far as the colors. But the cool thing about the bananas is if you actually mix other jeans into it, a lot of times it'll bring out a lot of the patterns of a lot of other combinations. And it really brings in a lot of this kind of a banana color to a lot of your combinations. And here is hands down my favorite banana combination. Take a look at this crazy snake. This is pretty amazing. This is actually a banana Mardi Gras, which is unbelievable. Probably one of the most impressive ball pythons that I've ever seen in my life. If you actually look at the price on this one, this one actually sold for $10,000, which is kind of crazy. This one's a little bit harder to hit because it's actually the combination of the asphalt and the yellow belly, which is a freeway. And then you add Enchi to the freeway, you get the Mardi Gras, and then you add banana on top of it and that you actually get the banana mardi gras that is a really crazy looking snake so here is the Mojave coming in at number four. It's kind of interesting to see which ones are most popular as far as sheer numbers. And the Mojave is, a, I'd say, if you actually look at it just by itself, it looks really close to the lesser, except it has a darker background. Some of these Mojaves can be really dark. And if you actually breed two Mojaves together, you get the all white snake with the blue eyes. And in some cases, when you work the Mojave with other genes in the blue-eyed leucistic complex, you can get kind of a purplish color snake making the purple passions or the mystic potions and the number of Mojaves over here on, on Morph Market is actually 15,000 just a little bit over 15,000 Mojaves over here on Morph Market and here is one of my favorite Mojave combinations this thing is hands down one of my favorites this is actually the combination of the GHI and the Mojaves and for some reason when you mix them together you get sometimes an almost patternless snake that is really almost jet black with this really bright line like a dotted line right down the top of the snake it's probably one of my favorite combinations if you've ever seen one of these in person it almost looks it almost looks like it's made out of plastic or something it just does not look real it is pretty amazing so here is the fire. The fire is number five on the list. If you actually look at the numbers of fires, just a little over 14,000 fires 
over here on Morph Market. And kind of the interesting thing with Fire is it actually looks really similar to a vanilla. So this snake is either a vanilla or a Fire, and both of them look exactly the same, but if you actually breed them into other things, you get completely different results. So for example, if you made a Super Fire, you'd get an all-white snake with black eyes, and if you had a Super Vanilla with two copies of the vanilla, you get a really scrambled up pattern, almost with the same color as you'd have here. And one of my, the, probably the hands down favorite fire combinations that I've seen over here in Morph Market, that has to be this one. Take a look at this. This is a vanilla scream with the leopard on top of it. So essentially what happens is you actually take the fire and you mix in vanilla, you get the vanilla cream, which really jumbles up the pattern. It's a really interesting effect. It's actually a Lelix. So you breed it to something else, half the offspring come out as vanilla, half come out as fire. And that's where the earlier fire slash vanilla snake came from. And then when you add in pastel, it really scrambles it up and you can convert the vanilla cream to the vanilla scream by the addition of pastel. And then you add leopard and it really explodes the pattern, which is pretty amazing. So here is the lesser, really popular gene over here. There's 12,000 lessers over here on Morph Market, which is kind of crazy. And the lesser is also in the blue-eyed leucistic complex. And it's really the king of white snakes, I'd say. If you mix lesser with any other gene in the blue-eyed leucistic, you always get a really bright white snake with blue eyes. And one of my favorite lesser combinations has to be this one. Take a look at this one. This is a blue-eyed leucistic. This is actually the combination combination of the lesser and the Mojave and look at how white this thing is super stark white with bright blue eyes pretty amazing combination so here is the leopard. As a matter of fact, I thought leopard was going to be higher up on the list. <laughs> I actually started looking at the numbers over here. This is the leopard coming in at almost 10,000 leopards over here on Morph Market. And the interesting thing about leopard, it really acts in two different ways in a lot of combinations. It really jumbles up the pattern. It's a really strong pattern enhancing gene, and it's also a dark gene. It'll really darken the background of a lot of your combinations. And when it comes to leopard, I'd say probably the best thing you can mix it with is other pattern enhancing genes. And I actually pulled up this combination over here. Take a look at this crazy snake. This one is really crazy and jumbled up. And essentially where you get this crazy pattern, that's coming from the combination of the leopard with the, uh, with the uh, spot nose. So the leopard and the spot nose are both really strong pattern enhancing genes. And then on top of that, you actually have the super pastel which also jumbles up the pattern so I actually have a, a combination of three different genes that really scrambles up the pattern and you get this really interesting scrambled up pattern and then you get the really dark background from the leopard too pretty amazing so believe it or not, the Orange Dream actually made the lit, the top 10 list. I couldn't believe that the Orange Dream was up here. Orange Dreams actually almost 10,000 Orange Dreams over here on Morph Market. It's kind of interesting that it actually made the top 10. And the Orange Dream is a really amazing gene. It's another brightening gene. Can bring a lot of oranges and bright colors to a lot of your combinations. And when you look at just the Orange Dream by itself, it almost looks like there's Enchi or something in there where you get a really reduced pattern sometimes almost as banded as some of the anchies, which is pretty interesting. And if you actually look at the belly of a lot of your orange dream, a lot of times you'll see like tracks along the belly, like black lines on either side of the belly that almost look like het pied markers, but that's actually part of the orange dream. So here is one of my favorite orange dream combinations, and that is the super orange dream. If you actually have like the high intensity line of the super orange dream, and you have two copies, you can get some really super super bright oranges. It is pretty amazing how bright orange some of these are. And this one's kind of interesting too. This is actually a super orange dream enchi pied. So the pied usually, the, the pied is a recessive gene that brings really big patches of white into the snake. And then we add enchi to the pied, it really reduces the amount of white. And then you bring in the super orange dream and it really turns into this crazy looking snake that is bright orange, pretty crazy. So actually number nine and number 10 are almost tied for the last place. And that uh, this is kind of surprising too. This is the black pastel and the cinnamon, which is pretty interesting. The black pastel, as a matter of fact, the cinnamon kind of out, <laughs> outranks the black pastel. There's actually over 9,000 cinnamons 
and about 7,000 black pastels over here on Morph Market. Bamboo did not make the list, which I was kind of surprised. You know, I think Bamboo is like number 18 or something like that, which is kind of crazy. So when it comes to the black pastel and the cinnamon, they're both really similar. As a matter of fact, I've seen some black pastels that look almost exactly like cinnamons. I think there's a little bit of overlap between the two jeans. Usually if you actually look at the black pastels, they'll have a really dark background and usually they'll be a more of a gold color than some of your cinnamons. Some of your cinnamons aren't quite as gold as this, but if you actually take the black pastel and you breed it to a cinnamon, this is what you get. You get the eight ball. Take a look at this crazy snake, which is pretty amazing. As a matter of fact, when it comes to the black pastel, I think a lot of people go after the panda pied as far as making uh, some of the combinations. That's probably why uh, the black pastel is really super popular too. And let me tell you, if you're actually working on a dark jean, one of the best things you can actually use is either the cinnamon or the black pastel. All right, so it is time for the question of the day. And Pat Wilson asks, do you have any tips for a male ball python that just won't lock up? And that is a very good question. So essentially what we're talking about is when a ball python locks up, that is when the male and the female are breeding during the breeding season. Essentially what they'll do is they'll twist their tails together. And I'd say most breeders, what they'll do is they'll take the male, put it in with the female, and then several times a day they'll peek into the tub to see if those ball pythons are breeding. And the problem with that, there's actually a couple problems. The first one is a lot of times ball pythons won't lock for very long. I've actually seen some snakes that'll only lock for about a half hour and then they're pretty much done. And let me tell you, unless you actually have a camera on those snakes, you probably won't catch them breeding. And some people get lucky and, and catch them breeding. And I'd say in most cases, I completely miss it. As a matter of fact, I got to the point where like a couple years ago, I was going through all my tubs with the males and the females and I was peeking in several times a day and I actually had a couple bad experiences where I opened the tub and it seemed Seems like I interrupted the process. They were actually locked until I opened the tub and then they got a little bit scared and separated. So then at that point I was like, all right, I'm not going to open the tub at all. I'm just going to let them do their thing. And what I do now is I put the male with the female and just kind of leave them alone for about three days before I pull the male out. And I kind of keep cycling the males through the females probably every three weeks for the breeding season, which is usually about five months. You keep cycling the males through the females. And I've actually seen some people, they, they had some hints on getting males to copulate with the females. And some people say you can actually take a male and put it in a tub with another male and just kind of supervise them with two males together and they kind of spar a little bit, kind of fight a little bit and you kind of get them all riled up and as soon as they kind of get into that fighting mode, you take the male and then put it in with the female. And some people will say that will stimulate copulation. I've also seen other people, what they'll do is they'll take a shed from another male, from another part, you know, another tub in their collection from, from a completely different male, put it in with the male and the female that they're trying to breed. And sometimes just the smell of the shed will stimulate that male to copulate with the female. But I don't even really mess with that. I just put the males with the females and most of the time I'd say I actually do get copulation and I just don't see it. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.